What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to learn how to speed up your python code with number and just in time compilation so let us get right into it all right so the first thing we want to do is we want to open up a terminal for example cmd on windows and we're going to say pip install number and as i said number is a just in time compiler a high performance just in time compiler which basically means that we compile certain pieces of python code during execution time so we have a certain function. This function is a, an ordinary Python function. And the first time we run that function, it's going to be compiled to machine code. And the second time uh, we call that function, it's not going to be interpreted by the Python interpreter. It's going to be run as machine code, which is significantly faster. Uh, so in order to do that, we need to say from, from number import JIT just in time. So this basically means just in time like that. Um, and we're going to import random and we're going to import math because we're going to do a very simple function here. It's not going to be too fancy. It's just going to be some function that has a parameter n, and we're going to do some random calculations. So this is not anything meaningful here. I'm just constructing a function that has some uh, computations to make so that it takes some time so that we can then measure a speed up. Uh, so basically, I'm just going to say z equals zero for i in range n. We're going to say x equals random dot random, y equals random dot random, and then z equals math dot sqrt x squared plus y squared. So nothing too fancy. And in the end, finally, we're going to return Z. And of course, we're not just going to say equals, but plus equals. So again, there's no real logic behind this computation here. It's just something that we do. Of course, you can also come up with something that makes sense. Uh, but that is just some computation. We can go ahead now. Uh, we should import time, I guess. Uh, we can go ahead now and measure uh, the time it takes. So we can say start equals time time end equals time time as well and then we can say uh print or actually we we don't want to print this because printing itself takes quite a lot of time uh we're going to say some function and let me just see what number is meaningful to measure those are three zeros six zeros okay ten million one two three one two three there you go so we can measure the time it takes to run this. And we can see without any speed up, we're not doing any compilation yet. We're just running the ordinary Python function here. Uh, it already takes some time here. We'll probably take like four or eight seconds or something like that. Maybe we should remove one zero. Oh, it takes quite some time. Oh, there you go. And of course, I'm stupid because I didn't print the result and minus start so we can wait again. But you saw that it takes quite some time. So if we manage to speed this up significantly, uh, then number obviously works. So this takes like eight seconds or something or six seconds, seven, nine, I don't know. Uh, but it takes some time. It doesn't work just like that. Oh, 13 seconds, actually. Okay. So we have uh, 13 seconds here. We can maybe write that down. 13 seconds. And now all we need to do in order to speed that up is we need to add an annotation, a decorator that says just in time. Now, the thing is that this JIT tag has the option called no Python. And we can set this to true and we can set this to false. Now, if we don't set anything, this basically means that if number is not able to compile this to machine code for some reason, we're going to fall back to a mixed mode to uh, to the Python interpreter. Uh, and no Python means no Python, no Python means uh, compile it to machine code and then use it as machine code only the interpreter doesn't have anything to say here. So with this function, it's going to work fine. With numpy, it's going to work fine. With pandas, we're going to encounter some problems. So uh, we're going to just run this again now with no Python equals true and the JIT tag and you're going to see a significant speed up. Um, hopefully, there you go 
nine seconds. This is way faster. Um, and this is only because we compiled it. Now, I think if we are able to run this a second time, it's going to be even faster because you need to think about this. The first time we call this function, we also compile it. So in those 1.7 seconds, we already had the compilation time, not just the execution time. So if I run this again, now we should be able to execute this way faster. So let's see what happens here. Um, run. So the first one should be way there you go 0 0.29 seconds. This is the execution time of the machine code. This is not the Python interpreter. And this is also not the compilation time. This is just the raw execution time. So this is 13 seconds compared to 0 0.293 seconds. This is extremely fast. All right, so that is just a simple Python function with calculations. Uh, and in the documentation, it says number likes loops, number likes broadcasting, number likes calculations and number also likes NumPy. So if we're working with NumPy, this should also uh, work without a problem. Import NumPy SNP, we're going to now have another function. Uh, and this function is going to be actually quite similar, we're going to do the same thing, but with NumPy arrays, not just with individual digits. Uh, so first of all, let's delete this JIT tag here, and we're going to have the same function, um, some function. And z is now going to be np dot zeros of shape n n. And then we're going to actually we need to surround those with parentheses here, because that's a shape. Uh, and then we're going to say for i in range n and here we're going to now define or generate random numpy array. So we're going to say np random dot rand of shape n n. We're going to do the same thing for y. And for z, we're now going to do np dot sqrt. And the rest stays the same. So that's actually the same function, but we're doing it now with numpy arrays, which is a lot of more computation needed here. Um, but that's actually quite simple. So we can go ahead and measure the actual uh, execution time. But since we're dealing with arrays here, we cannot just go with 10 million, we have to pick a smaller value, let's go with 500. And let's remove all that. Now let's see how long it takes without any optimization without any compilation. It should take like a couple of seconds for 500 elements. Now this is not 500 elements, it's 500 times 500. So uh, it's quite a big number here. So there you go 8.48 uh, seconds in order to process 500 or n equals 500. Uh, if we now go ahead and add, let me just write it down again. We had 8.48. Oh, come on. 8.48 seconds. And if we now go ahead and add a JIT tag, no Python equals true. By the way, no Python equals true is the best practice mode, you don't want to use object mode, which is the other mode. Uh, so you want to use the no Python mode, because that's uh, the mode that you want for best performance. The only reason to not use it is if there are any problems, whenever you can you use no Python equals true. So now we're going to do this again. And we should hopefully see a speed up. I don't see a speed up. Why don't I see a speed up? Come on. It takes actually longer. Okay, no, it's not longer, but it was not really a speed up, maybe because of the compilation. Maybe if you run this a second time, it's going to be faster. It doesn't really speed up a lot. Let's see what happens if I do this one more time. Let me cross check my code here should actually work. Maybe it works the second time, maybe the compilation time is way too too large for this one. Okay, we have at least some speed up here. Let me just see if I didn't uh, make any mistakes here. We have JIT no Python equals true. Uh, we have a basic function, we say np zeros, we say for i in range n, we do all these calculations, we return z. 
Uh, so maybe we can see a better speed up if we go to lower or higher numbers. I'm not sure. Let's do it without this tag first. Okay, 0 0.03. Now if I do it with the tag, Okay, it actually takes longer because we need to compile. Uh, maybe the opposite is true. Maybe if, if we go with, I don't know, I want to go too high here, but maybe if we go to 600, let's go with 600, and we're going to see better results. But yeah, sometimes it doesn't work as well as it should work. Sometimes it works better. It depends. You just need to, to evaluate it. I think uh, whenever you have a complicated logic where Python, where the Python interpreter can mess up a lot of things, uh, then usually you don't want to, uh, then usually you want to use number. And if it's just some short code, maybe number is not the best solution here. Okay, so 11.33 is already with the optimization. So let's see what it is without. But I think we're not going to get as good as of a speed up as we got in the beginning. So probably doesn't work too well on this particular case. But the documentation says that number likes NumPy. So if we're using NumPy, okay, we have at least some speed up here. Uh, I'm going to terminate this now. Uh, but last but not least, I want to also show you here that it does not work with pandas, at least not the way we want it to work. So I'm going to delete all of that and we're going to do we're going to say import pandas SPD. By the way, for those of you who didn't figure that out already, you need to install NumPy and you need to install pandas if you don't have it already installed. And I'm also going to use the pandas data reader. This is not going to be anything uh, related to to this particular NumPy compilation, uh, number compilation, but I'm just going to load some data. So you don't need to use the data reader if you don't want to. You can also generate data. Um, but I'm going to just load some stock data and the function is going to be pandas function and we're going to pass data to it and what we're going to do is we're just going to do some operations. We're going to say okay result equals data dot sort values and we're going to say by and we're going to sort by volume. So just some stuff so that it has to do something result equals result dot apply map math dot sqrt. So we're going to take the square root of all these things. Then we're going to just say result plus equals two, which is, you know, result plus equals two. What does that even do? Number doesn't know what that does, but it's a valid Python code. So it's going to be confused. It's not going to be able to compile this properly. Uh, then result equals result dot apply map. And we're going to do uh, a lambda expression here. So this is not going to work at all, by the way, we're going to see that this is the case in a second. Um, and then we're just going to take the transposed version here. And then we're going to return result. So just a useless function that does something. And what we're going to do is we're going to say data equals web dot data reader, we're going to load Apple stock data from the Yahoo Finance API, and we're going to then just say start equals time, time, and equals time, time. And then we're saying pandas function on data, and in the end, we print end minus start. There you go. So first of all, we're going to do this without uh, without any tags, and we're going to see how long it takes. Uh, 0 0.02 seconds. So the large uh, or the waiting time that we had was because of the API. So you can see this is uh, actually quite quick. Do it again. There you go. It doesn't take too long. Uh, now if we want to optimize that we can go ahead and say JIT no Python equals true and you're going to see that there are going to be some problems. There you go. So first of all, uh, where was it? Uh, we had something failed in no Python mode. Yeah, first of all, it failed in no Python mode, because it says on the documentation, it does not work with pandas usually. And because of that, when we use pandas, we just use JIT without any no Python, 
because that means that it can fall back to object mode if needed. Now, if we run this here, I think we should still get some problems because of the Lambda. There you go, global name Lambda is not defined, so we can get rid of that line. It doesn't, uh, is not supported by JIT. And I think now at least it kind of works. There you go, but it takes longer, of course. Uh, now, if we run this a second time, maybe we have a slight speed up, but I don't even think so. We can see if that is the case. But all in all, what you need to, to know here is that when you're working with pandas with some more complicated mappings and functions or operations like this one, uh, JIT is not going to work. So number is not going to work properly. It works good with ordinary mathematical functions. It works good with loops and with basic algorithms. It works perfectly fine with NumPy. It does not work with pandas and other more complicated libraries. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.